Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Oxygen Not Included. In the previous episode we built the liquid purification system and we also moved our power storage system into a centralized area in order to supply the entirety of our base. In between the episodes I did a couple of things I want to inform you about. First and foremost I installed a gas pump in the bottom of my base as well as the waste room at the bottom. I also installed a pump and I served each with its own individual signal switch so we can turn these on and off as we need in order to slowly get rid of the gases and liquids we don't want. For that purpose I also installed a gas filter in order to expel everything that is not oxygen. The oxygen is just going back straight into the base. I also rearranged my setup with the coal generators since the auto sweepers weren't able to reach the third and fourth generator. It was kind of unfortunate but you know it's just using a little bit more lead. The power usage is insignificant since they only activate when you really need them. It seems as though you have to put them to 100% in order for the auto sweeper to actually do anything. I'm not sure, but that's when they actually were starting to feed the generators. Also a Wii's ward in the middle in order to cool things down a little bit until we have a better system. In the comments I learned that you get no real benefits in terms of incubation, just putting them into the incubation chamber. You have to power them in certain intervals for the duplicants to actually apply a buff to them. However, the incubators still help because the eggs are getting hatched automatically and brought to their respective stables automatically as well. Because of the influx of hatches, I decided to build a third stable and this is probably going to be our final stable for the time being. In terms of temperature, I also have to make a couple of corrections. The temp shift plate I actually had in this tile was translating power to all the surrounding tiles, including the insulated tile. I wasn't actually aware of that fact so much, I thought it really doesn't matter. But thanks to you, I'm doing the proper research. We can see these tiles were already starting to heat up. The same thing with these tiles down there. They were expelling heat down into my base because I had temp shift plates here at the bottom. So what I did is I removed these temp shift plates and I added one here in the back, a single one, so only the tiles that are actually inside of the room are affected by it. Also I removed every other temp shift plate behind these machines, so now we have a temp shift plate here, another one there, a third one here and the fourth one here. So this tile is free and not translating the heat into the insulated tiles. Another correction in terms of temperature, I mentioned that we only need maybe three pipes in order to cool down the oil. The reason the first oil that went through was cooling down so crazy is because it was sucking up the heat of the already cooled down pipes. So once the pipes assumed the temperature of the oil, the cooling down effect wasn't that extreme anymore. Therefore I replaced a couple of these pipes again so we can cool down the oil even more. At the moment I don't have the power, this is why it's not running. Well then, let's get today's episode started. In the beginning of this episode, I want to path the way to a new food source as well as processing tons and tons of slime we accumulated. Looking here at the top, I already had to set up four storages in order to contain the slime and as long as we're not doing anything with it, it's not gonna be gone. I decided to add a door in the middle of my nature reserve, so every duplicant that is gonna tend to anything that we build in this farm is probably gonna get the nature reserve buff. Another way to get them into this room supposedly is to put in a shower, that was one of your tips. But there we go, this is how we're gonna do it. They're gonna bring down the slime into this room, then we're gonna have an algae distiller. If we check out the algae distiller, it takes 600 grams of slime and it outputs some algae and polluted water. As a direct result, we could also use the fertilizer that would be using this polluted water, as well as some dirt and phosphorite, in order to create natural gas and fertilizer. Hmm, I'm not sure, but it looks as though the natural gas will be expelled into the air, so that is another problem we would have to tackle. Since we're dealing with slime, we would also have to place a sink, so maybe let's get started with that. I actually wanted one more block up, so we save a little bit on space. So that's two sinks. We also want the carbon dioxide to sink down, so everything in this room we're probably gonna build out of air tiles. We could also build into the other direction to maybe have a mini farm of some sorts. Uh, should we do that? I mean, we, we could do it in order to keep a little bit of mealwood. In the end, I would like to remove the entirety of the mealwood and move our entire farming operation in the cellar. 
We could even add a third sink just in case and then we go down here. We can have one layer of farming. No, this is gonna be the machine layer. So let's go ahead and first remove all of these ladders. Huh, looks like the fungal spore also requires two tiles. Uh, let, oh, wow, did you see that? Oh no, he's trapped now. <laughs> Hassan, what are you doing, man? So my only chance is to build these airflow tiles really quickly. And I think it's actually working out. Come on. Just one more. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. Hassan is saved. Let's think about the machinery. We want a farm station in here, that's for sure. Can I turn this around? No, but this would go right there. Actually, we have a little bit more space. So we could go ahead, set this up right there. And then we also have in the refinement tab, the Alchi distiller, uh, though this is taking up a little more space. Let's have that right here and then a fertilizer next to it. This leaves us some space for a storage solution. We can have a wastewater right there in order to help out with the temperature and then a whole bunch of airflow tiles again. Though these could be normal tasks since the airflow is blocked anyways. In order to get two rows going, I would have to put this down one more block. And you know what? This room is way too big to be a farm anyways. What is the maximum size? 96 tiles. Holy cow. So if I only take this lower part, it's still 130 tiles. Darn it. You know what I'm shooting for now? Let me think about this. I think I want to rearrange this completely. All right, we are back and I think I actually found a configuration I'm happy with. We are going through the nature reserve, coming down here, this tiny insulated manual airlock. We can wash our hands on the way out. There are gonna be a couple of Atmo suits because most of the time there's only gonna be carbon dioxide and natural gas down there. Still, they're gonna be coming through the base with slime in their hands and thus I want them to wash their hands no matter what. Once we come down here, we actually want to place another manual airlock above this tile. Let me get rid of this ladder. So this room down below here is gonna be our farm room. It is 91 tiles in size and we have a couple of farm plots, including the farm station. We also have the space for the algae distiller with the slime storage next to it. Just to be sure, I also put a deodorizer right there. Now, in my opinion, we can still swap these tiles below the docks. I don't think this is really necessary. Uh, you can become a granite tile as well. No, this is sandstone. I want them to be granite for some reason. So there we go. Everything else is granite as well. Now, the only thing I'm not so sure about is the fertilizer synthesizer. Uh, the natural gas is lighter than the carbon dioxide. So we could go ahead and pump it out at this spot. The problem at the moment I have with this, it's using up too much space. Well, I guess we can actually justify this because we need to wait for some natural gas to accumulate and I don't want it to accumulate in a tiny room so that it can float out directly into rooms we don't have control over it. So I think I'm just gonna unpause the game and let the duplicants build what we have thus far, including the tiny insulated airlock, of course. We will also have to supply the docks with oxygen. So it's time to bring down the oxygen line here. Gonna drag this through here. Now we are making this out of granite, so this could be an issue. Maybe eventually we'll have to replace these with insulated. But there we go. It is also time to get another power transformer in the joint. <laughs> of course, another deodorizer in the way. Well, this shouldn't prevent us from actually laying out the cables. I want to supply this with power. I also want to supply the algae distiller with power. Now, this might be counterintuitive, but we are gonna cross wires here. We could have powered the docks with the line we already have. But my main concern is that I only have wires I know are not gonna go above 1000. Even though the potential load of this wire, for instance, is 1.8k, I'm pretty sure it's never gonna go above 1000 with the machines we have attached them to. It would be an incredible coincidence. Beautiful. For the time being, I'm gonna disable this building so my duplicants can still run through. And this also means we wanna build two more Atmo suits. Let's do that as soon as possible. Now, one more thing we gotta do is supply our sink. And I'm actually gonna make an exception for this. We have the Chermi water coming from this pipe and I'm just gonna grab that. So we're gonna bridge over here. This is even gonna have priority. We're gonna do that with insulated piping. Bring that over here into our sink. We're then gonna come out of the sink, go over into our waste room. Actually, we could put this right back into the water sieve. Hmm, that's actually tempting though. We're gonna have a priority problem. We can fix the priority problem by placing a bridge like so. That means the water coming from the pump is gonna give way and therefore the water from the sink is gonna have priority. 
Actually, with this new arrangement, we don't need this liquid bridge anymore. We can just go ahead and directly connect this with the pipe. Just to show off a little bit, still germ-free water and it is accumulating greatly. As soon as we reach the liquid vent, the system is going to automatically come to a halt. Now thinking about everything, if the system comes to a halt, we're going to have a huge problem because some of the water is going to be accumulating. We need to be able to always dump it into this reservoir if needed. So I'm going to screw my laziness here and instead we are going to dump everything in the water tank and pump it up again with the pump. So none of these connections will be here. Just give me a brief moment to think this through. Okay, there it is, the solution. I just moved most of the piping down so that I can take my pure fresh water all the way over to the sink and then the germy water is going to go back into the waste room with the liquid vent. We are pumping the polluted water right there into the two water sieves and it's still coming down. It's just, you know, everything moved a little bit so that I can accomplish this in a fail-proof way. Okay, looks like we have enough water in here. This is going to be the last bottle before we destruct this bottle emptier. In its place, we're going to add another chest with slime. So every time they bring this down here, we should see a positive effect. Looks like everything is done. What do we need? This is going to produce polluted water. So let's think about that. Gonna use some insulated piping in order to go straight down into our fertilizer maker. However, we're gonna produce like 400 grams of polluted water and we only need, I don't know, we don't need that much, that's for sure. So the rest of the polluted water can go directly over into our waste room. Oh, I just see, we need to deconstruct this planter box and this tile, move it one more up. Actually, thinking about it, let's toggle these open. They still count as a room division, but the duplicants won't have to wait anymore to pass through. Now, how are we going to deal with the carbon dioxide? That is a good question. If I'm not mistaken, there are actually smaller pumps. In the research tree, we have the valve mini This is the research we need in order to get the mini gas pump and mini liquid pump. So it's going to use up a little less space and power. We will also need a gas filter that I'm going to place right there. And thinking about it, we might even need a gas element sensor. So we could maybe add two conditions. So detecting the element natural gas, but also have it in a certain density. So let's say we detect the natural gas right there. And then uh, where is the Atmo sensor? Get the Atmo sensor right next to it. We're gonna need an AND gate in order to check if both of these conditions are true. And then we're gonna put these into each of the input slots and the output slot is gonna go to the gas pump. This way we'll only use the pumping setup if it's really necessary. Something I wanna check. Ellie just went through this room. It still counts as a nature reserve. So if we check Ellie, wow, look at this morale. And we can also see it. Nature reserve is listed on there. Plus six morale. It is time to move our slime endeavors into these two chests. I'm actually going to destroy all of the other chests right here. The atmosphere at the moment here is too dense anyways to output any more polluted oxygen. Another thing I would like to do is actually collect my natural gas somewhere else. We're going to bring it all the way along the top of our base and we're going to use it to power up some natural gas generators. I'm actually going to build this on the third level here, I believe. Yeah, this is where I want to bring my natural gas to. So let's say we're going to have an entrance right there. And then we are going to need a gas reservoir. I'm going to make this out of iron. And we're going to bring the natural gas into the reservoir right there. And then we can use it for our generators. This is obviously much better than what we did so far, venting it outside of our base. Yay! Our research is completed, mini gas pump. You actually need plastic in order to build that. We're gonna build it in the highest possible location. Some insulated gas pipes in order to get into the filter. Then the natural gas is gonna be sorted out and the carbon dioxide should just go back into the same room. Uh, let me see, maybe right here is not a bad spot. No, I cannot do it there. I have to go all the way over, which is not my preferred solution, but alas. What? Why are you building the gas pipe out of sandstone? Good. Natural gas is going to continue meeting up with the storage of our natural gas generators. Now, could possibly someone please finish the wires here? What is so difficult? Yes. Okay. Now we have the power. It is flowing through everything. That's great. However, that means the Alchi distiller is already going for it. Uh, let's maybe enable the building here now. We want them to go down there in the Atmo suits. 
Did I take care of everything? The waste, okay, there's the farm station. Let's go ahead and plant a bunch of mushrooms. See if we can finally do this. So all of this is gonna be mushroom territory. The question is actually, will we be able to maintain the carbon dioxide level in this room? This is gonna be important. I'm kind of hoping because we have so many duplicates sleeping on top of this, we will be filling up this room with fresh carbon dioxide every night. Now, of course, things like this are going to be a problem. This is whenever a duplicant decided to come in with the slime and then it's either their downtime or they have another issue and they just drop the slime on the floor, creating polluted oxygen. The polluted oxygen is already flowing around. I don't like the idea of that. So maybe just in case we're going to have a couple more deodorizers hanging around. But yeah, that might result in a couple of issues. We could counteract that by having more duplicants taking care of the storing commands. Yeah, there we go, the algae distiller is going for it, creating more algae for us to use and actually getting rid of that pecky slime. In the process, we get tons of water as well, which we can then use in order to clean up. So far, so good, I would say. In terms of temperature, we have to be a little bit more careful. I would say it's time for a couple of temp shift plates out of ice. Oh no, the fertilizer synthesizer is already going for it. We need to set the gas pressure. Let's say it should be above 1,500. Hmm, no, let's do it above 1,000. I'm not sure, we'll have to play around with these. And the element we want to detect, of course, is the natural gas. So both of these conditions have to be true in order to activate the gas pump, which is an unreachable build. Darn it! <laughs> Oh, okay, let's uh, disable this building for the time being. I don't want too much natural gas from accumulating. Uh, how can we reach this build? I think we first have to deconstruct this. Oh man, this is unfortunate. Good, now we can build some ladders up to that and we should be able to build it. Jeez. Looking at our food storage currently, I think we can get rid of half of the plants for the time being. Otherwise, my farmer is going to be too busy to tend to the mushrooms. There we go. I think he's going for it. Yeah, he's fertilizing the mushrooms, which is great. And of course, it had to save at that time. Come on, can somebody... <gasps> what? You built... You little... I took apart the fertilizer maker so he can build this. <laughs> uh, no power wire connected, obviously. Let's actually go straight through here and get rid of that. Oh, wait. Do we already have our first harvest no he's adding the farmer's touch wow he's never done that with the meal lice but we have everything in place so if we detect natural gas at a pressure of 1000 grams then we're going to pump out some stuff and just to be sure we are still filtering it uh looks like in order to complete this we still have to build the gas reservoir come on guys hurry up there we go. I can build back my fertilizer synthesizer and this room should be complete. Man, this actually took a while. <laughs> Still everything working the way I anticipated. I mean, I'm expecting a bunch of germs. We're dealing with slime after all, but we're also gaining a lot more algae, which is great. Wonderful. Let's make sure we are also cooking up the mushrooms. Is this actually queued up? Everything is queued up, but we're gonna make a lot of fried mushroom now. I actually took out the pickled meal. It was taking away too much time from our cook. And I guess at this point we could get rid of the mealwood farm altogether. What do you say? I think this is a good idea. I'm gonna get rid of a good portion just a little bit. We're also gonna deconstruct the farming station. They wouldn't build it because I forgot to place this granite tile. I mean, sometimes, guys. Now, naturally, this is not gonna last for a long time. The natural gas reservoir is gonna fill up pretty quickly, so we need to take care of that immediately by just pumping it through a natural gas generator. So I'm probably just gonna have two of those right here, maybe with a wheezwort in the center in the beginning. They're going to take the natural gas, outputting polluted water and carbon dioxide, producing 800 watts, we can hook this up with our heavy watt conductive wire. And from the looks of it, the polluted water is just gonna be output right here. This is actually funny and it's just dropping on the floor. So I guess I don't mind, it's gonna help with the cooling and it's just gonna drop down into this pool for the time being. So let's take the natural gas and fill up these generators. About the carbon dioxide at the moment, I don't care. It's just gonna be vented. Since we have some coal generators on the top producing more carbon dioxide, it really doesn't matter at this point. You know, the entirety of the map is kind of a storage for your gases. Eventually, we're actually going to set up a couple of pumps in order to take advantage of everything we still have. 
going on outside the base. But there we go, we're using up the natural gas, so the only thing that's left to do is tell the natural gas when to activate. So we're gonna take another ribbon reader, and we wanna activate these generators, let me think, as soon as possible actually. Currently I'm using the first bit or the 80% mark for my coal generators. I wanna put this to the fourth bit and then we are gonna take the first bit here for our natural gas generators. I wanna use up the natural gas always first. It's not gonna be enough so other generators will have to take over. But at least this way we don't get a backlog of natural gas. Uh, come on, there it is, the ribbon reader. Yeah, it's already set to bit 1. You can see bit 1, 2 and 3 are active. As soon as bit number 4 is gonna activate at 20%, the coal generators are gonna kick in, which should happen in just a second. There we go. Ah, love the system. Oh, looks like we have way too much pressure going on here. So what we actually have to do is we have to take a high pressure gas vent that goes all the way up to 20 kilos instead of the two normal kilos. Alright, I would say with that out of the way, we actually have accomplished our goals, except there is no wait, no filter selected. This should be natural gas, of course. Yeah, there we go. Okay, at this point, I'm actually gonna let the game run for a little bit. I'm gonna observe our situation. I'm also gonna give them a little bit of time to finally pick up some of the stuff that is on the floor. And I guess at this point, it's time to say goodbye to our farm altogether. Beautiful. But with that out of the way, thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great time and see you soon. Bye-bye.